Diplo is one of the world's best known DJs and producers, but in the years that he's been in the limelight, allegations of indecent and harmful conduct against women have followed. Your first initial communications, I believe you were 17 years old, right? I remember him looking back at me while I'm like putting back on my clothes and he was like, how old are you by the way? I could, I could always tell you were young. And he literally told me, that's not a nude. That's not a nude, you need to show Is it true that he took your virginity? Yes. Okay. The second round, I heard him say, I'm recording this. Let's get into it. Welcome back to the Let's Get Into It podcast hosted by me, Sloan. Today, we are joined by one of Diplo's victims who's ready to speak out. How are you doing, Shelly August? Hi. I'm, I know you're a little <laughs> bit nervous to be here, <laughs> yeah. but you don't need to be nervous. So Shelly's had a bunch of different people try to reach out to her to talk about her story with Diplo. We're talking about like NBC, The Sun, a bunch of different people have and at that point, you weren't ready. So now you're ready to talk about your story. And I know it's very daunting. So we're going to go through what her experiences with Diplo were like, the legal battles and just all the details that a lot of these reports leave out because Diplo has seemed to run the narrative when it comes to the media coverage surrounding his case. And I feel like you haven't had the opportunity to really like set the record straight or to tell your story. So um, how, like, why are you ready now? Is it because of a legal, like, are you legally able to speak or what has allowed you to come in onto this podcast today? So I do have litigation privilege, so I can speak about my lawsuit and everything that that entails. Um, what's made me ready to speak about this now is just like, I feel like I've been silenced for almost two years now and I haven't been able to speak. I had a conversation actually with one of his attorneys last week. Mm -hmm. And after that conversation, I literally hung up the phone and I was like, yeah, I'm done. Is like, that like what prompted you to reach out to me and you're like, I'm ready? That That is exactly what prompted it because I was just like, I can't, I'm not, I'm done being silenced. Like I'm done basically giving them everything that they want. Yeah. You know, um, I've tried to oblige to... You know, so we'll get into like the whole yeah. arbitration situation, but I tried to oblige to, I guess, the rules mm -hmm. of not speaking on things. And I feel like they just keep trying to like use different leverages over me. And I'm like, you know what? I'm just done. The conversation I had with him on the phone, he sounded so unhinged uh -huh. that I was like, no. Yeah. F man i was like no i'm done like this is yeah he he started off the conversation literally he so he asked if he could call me mm -hmm. like over text message or like email email uh -huh. and i said sure we set up a time for a call he calls me and the first thing he says was hey shelly thanks for taking the call i'm in vegas right now it's 114 degrees outside me and my friend yesterday we tried to like bake bread in the mail and it actually worked and like he just was telling trying me, to like befriend you almost yeah almost like kind of i guess like disarm me in a sense mm -hmm. and i noticed i'm like this is so uncomfortable because it just speaks to how like you know manipulators are. Yeah. It was like he was playing good cop, bad cop. So at one point he's like, you know, trying to disarm me and seem relatable. He was telling me that he used to be a backup dancer <laughs> for some um like older black artist. I don't remember the name. I could have sworn he said Luther. He's trying Vandross, to like win you over, like yeah, by saying win that. me over. But he started like saying, I know you go on cruises a lot. I've been thinking about <laughs> going on a cruise to Alaska, but you know, with global warming, and I'm just like, Diplo's paying you probably a thousand dollars an hour. For this phone call and yeah. you're like trying to like kiki key key with me yeah you know and and but at the end of the conversation he basically was like it was like i said it was like good cop bad cop mm -hmm. so he was saying like he was trying to get me comfortable with him but then he was saying you know my client has no intention on um continuing to litigate this and i think that you know what would be best for for everyone involved is to just walk away but the walk away would include you issuing a public apology to him. Oh no. So then you pretty much saying like, I lied and then like Diplo's innocent. And mm -hmm. of course that's what he wants. Yep. And he said, whether you want to believe it or not, my client continues to lose money every single day. And I'm like, 
No, he doesn't. He's booked and busy. He just did Lola Palooza yesterday. Really? He did yeah. Gov Ball last month. He did Stagecoach. Yeah. He's done EDC. He's been so booked and like busy. Like your story did not put a dent in his career. Not even a dent. <laughs> yeah. In his career. Well, you that's um, also why I'm excited to speak to you is just because like there's a lot of reporting on this and there's a lot that's false. So you guys will notice like throughout this like interview, I'm just leveraging what I can find online. But Shelly's going to correct me and like set the record straight and, you know, tell her side of it all. So before we get into that, I want to talk a little bit about like who you are. So where are you from? I'm originally from Miami, Florida. Oh, Miami. Yes. Love it. Is that where you grew up? That is where I grew up. Yeah. And then you like went to school there and like, yep. high school and everything. Yep, I went to Miami Beach Senior High, so right on wow. South Beach. Wow, yep. that's intense. It was, probably, it was fun. Yeah. <laughs> well, South Beach is so chaotic sometimes. I'm just like, yeah. I saw a lot. Yeah, true. <laughs> I was like in the country growing up. Oh, yeah, okay, so cows. that's like a culture shock for you, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so then did you, Um. so growing up, I mean, did you have like a decent life? Like everything was nice, like at home, like were your mom and dad together? Yeah, so I grew up in a two-parent household. Mm -hmm. um, my parents actually just recently divorced oh, no. last November. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, I mean, I grew up in, I had a great upbringing. Yeah. I grew up very, um, I grew up Christian. Mm -hmm. um, so, and I grew up kind of like in a, in a semi-strict household. Like me and my mom are very close. Like I consider her like my best friend, but, you know, definitely very structured and I wasn't like a wild child, you know. Yeah, um, partying it up. You weren't like at the raves, like seeking out the DJs no, or anything like that. Not at all. That's why it's kind of just like, how did I get here? Yeah. You know? So your first initial communications I believe you were 17 years old, right? Yeah. So then you were in high school at that point. Correct? I was a senior in high school. I was just about to graduate. Mm -hmm. Um and I did turn 18 that year. Yeah. Um, but yes, at the time that he hit me up on Twitter in 2014, <laughs> I was in high school and I literally was asking like my friends and my my cousin, I saw that like um, my cousin and people who I knew followed him mm -hmm. on Twitter because you could see like mutual followers yeah. or whatever. And then I also saw like Justin Bieber follows him. So I'm like, who is this And guy? you were a big Justin Bieber fan and I just for big context. Justin Bieber She's fan, a big, yes. <laughs> are you still a big Justin Bieber fan or was that like an earlier phase? Um, not to the point where like I would go to like his shows or anything yeah, like yeah, I know yeah. like some of my friends still are they just went to like his recent tour before he canceled it um oh. I didn't really have any interest in going yeah, but like, gr growing out. up I did he was he was an escape for me definitely yeah. and I and I think like that being a fan of him during that time taught me a lot too and like I was telling you earlier like you know with the whole scooter thing reaching out mm -hmm. to me scooter reached out to me and taught me a lot and kind of got me into the whole marketing aspect of like how social media marketing and stuff really worked when it came to bringing Justin yeah. up and his connection with the fans and stuff. So just on the Justin Bieber thing really quick. So I want to quickly tell that story. So you um, called out Justin Bieber because he would bring girls onto stage for the song One Less Lonely Girl, right? One Less Lonely Girl, But yeah. he would only bring up white girls, like yeah. no Asian girls, no black girls, brown girls. And so you made the, like a Twitter post. It essentially went viral. So Scooter reached out to you. Does Scooter have you delete that post and delete that page or like? Not at all, actually. No. Scooter so he just befriended you over that. Scooter trending. actually reached out and said, thank you for bringing this to our attention. This, is, mm. this was never um, our intention of singling, you know, yeah, girls, like out, girls out and thank you for bringing this to our attention and making us aware of this like we are going to you know consciously make an effort to change it and then justin followed me and then it started this really? whole yeah and then justin dm'd me too and um this was like this was like 2009 2010 uh -huh. so very early like in his in his career i think 2010 and justin dm'd me and said you know thank you bringing this to our attention yeah and he was yeah they appreciated it did you ever actually like meet scooter braun yes yeah like so how did you like what did that well how did that happen like what came about like what led especially you being in miami like was it after you had moved to la in oh no so actually the funny thing is i actually still have a voicemail from scooter where my <laughs> friends were waiting outside of the studio called the hit factory in miami it's a very popular studio mm -hmm. a lot of artists use that studio um when they're making their records and stuff and justin was there and scooter uh saw one of my friends and asked her where i was mm -hmm. and she was like oh she's not here and he's like why is she not here call her for me let me call her oh. he calls me i'm literally in bed 
at home being the good child that I was, yeah. you know, like I was not out in the streets like that. That's why it's interesting when it comes to like Diplo saying that I'm like crazy stalker fan, blah, blah, blah. Like mm-hmm. that wasn't even me with Justin. Yeah. And I loved him. Mm-hmm. I literally loved him. So I was home and Scooter calls me and is like, Shelly, why aren't you here? Like I would have brought you in the studio. Your friends are here, but you're not. Next time you got to come. And mm-hmm. literally, yeah, was basically just saying, you know, I want to make you meet Justin. Yeah. That's interesting. So um, when did you like what was the plan for you moving to L.A.? Like, did you did you ever go off to college or did you just like directly move to L.A. after high school? So. (laughs) So, okay, so my friend, I've always wanted to live in L.A. Mm -hmm. ever since I was little. Um, And I wanted to go to college out here and everything, too. My dream school was UCLA. Um, It was either UCLA or Pepperdine. Mm -hmm. And I started college in Miami. Um, and then my friend had just graduated from St. John's University in New York and Mm -hmm. was moving out here to LA and he needed a roommate. And at that time I was like, not really knowing what I wanted to do. And I was kind of just in limbo and I felt like I, you know, I don't know. I just, this was your calling. Yeah, this was like, it was, yeah, it was my calling was a sign. So I, within two weeks, I literally just dropped everything and moved with him here. And, Mm -hmm. um, where'd you guys move that when you first got out here? Like, were you in West Hollywood or were you? We were in Hollywood. Hollywood? Yeah, yeah like North, like uh, Western Avenue. So many people, like, when they first get here, they end up in, like, Inglewood or, like, well, random house places. Yeah, like, Western Avenue is kind of, like, when I, the first week I moved here, I had all my stuff stolen. Really? Yeah, I had, oh, ho- I had a homeless person break into our apartment. Yeah, it was, <gasps> yeah. You weren't there, though, no? I was. Really? Did you know they were in there and stealing? Or? <laughs> they weren't stealing. She was like going through the fridge and I had like, yeah, it was crazy. Yeah. yeah. I've had a, actually like my agent like had someone break in too and it was really scary. Yeah, it's terrifying. He was like, come over and protect me. I was like, I'm a fighter. So if you have someone over there, like if I can get there in time. So yeah. you moved to LA and you've been here since you like LA, right? Yeah. So sorry. So what I, I, I intended on going to college here. I started at mm-hmm. like um, Santa Monica College for digital communications and media marketing. And um, I ended up stopping because I just got so caught up in like the LA lifestyle. I was like so new to me, you know, it was like really exciting and new. So I was getting caught up in like- Going out and socializing. I feel that way too, because like, I mean, I am pretty good at balancing my work, but like I'm always so busy. That's probably why I look exhausted in the camera. So um, you, I guess you met Diplo on Twitter when you were 17. What the hell were you posting on Twitter that Diplo like reaches out to you? Was, was it like pictures or like what made him, do you think like initially attracted to reach out to you? That's what I was actually, I wonder the same thing. Yeah, I honestly wonder the same thing. It's interesting though that you mentioned like pictures because I do know at that time my pictures were getting a lot of retweets uh-huh. and it was like, I don't, this sounds so like weird to say, but um, I was kind of in like this deck. It was called like a Twitter deck where uh-huh. it was like girls would retweet each. We would all retweet each other's pictures on our pages in order to get more, uh-huh. more like flow and, and for it to be on more people's pages. And then they would favorite it and they would retweet it. So I honestly think that that's probably how I ended up on his feed. feed. Yeah. Yeah. Essentially for him to like, you know. Reach out to you. And what were those initial messages like? Was it just like, hey, how are you? And he literally, the first message he sent me was, sup. (laughs) Yeah. Sup. And I literally asked my friends, I'm like, who is this guy? Mm -hmm. And then my friends were the ones who were like, that's Diplo. He works for Justin Bieber. He has a song with Usher. Like, he's like, like, you know, they like really hyped, hyped him up. To be honest, and which made like, you, you know probably him? more interested too. You're kind of like, oh, okay, like this yeah, guy's like, hitting oh, you. Oh, okay, yeah, like he's. So, oh, cool. what were the conversations like at first? Were you guys kind of like getting to know each other, or did it get like inappropriate quickly? Um, at first, he was just like, sup, whatever, and then mm-hmm. I was like, hey, and then he was like, um, I don't remember if he asked me where I'm from, mm-hmm. or if he said, I I do remember it quickly escalating to like him asking me to come to Vegas. Mm-hmm. And then me being like, I can't go to Vegas. I'm yeah. in a fucking liner, you parents, know. Like, like, and also, also too, I just didn't have any experience when it came to talking to guys. Like, mm-hmm. I never had a boyfriend in high school or middle school. Like, I is it true that the reports are that he took your virginity? Right? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Which so I was like, he was like the first guy that I really had any type of like 
intimacy with. Yeah. Yeah. Or even just like communication in that type of way, like flirtiness or anything like that. You know, I didn't know. I literally did not know. I did not know how to flirt. I did not know how to send yeah. nudes and thirst traps and things like did that. Did he kind of like, teach you those things? He, he did, yeah. And, and like that was so, so that was one of the first. Sorry, go ahead. would you send over Twitter or like Snapchat or like text? Snapchat. Or? So Snapchat. so he oh. so he asked me for my Snapchat. Mm-hmm. Um. So after like the whole like sup whatever like I th- I don't remember if he said where are you from like it was just kind of like small talk at the beginning. I do know that in one of the Twitter DMs it was like oh like come to Vegas me being like Ugh, like making an excuse. <laughs> And then him being like, what's your Snapchat? Added each other on Snapchat. And then instantly, I'm not even kidding. The first message he sent me on Snapchat was send nudes. Really? Yeah. And I thought it was like kind of like a joke, like ha ha funny. Like it was like, you know how people are always like, oh, send nudes, send nudes. I thought, but uh, I don't think that's a joke Did you like respond with it? Like, did you send a nude? No, No. actually I didn't. I kind of like thought it was a joke. So I was like, ha ha. Yeah. You first, like type of thing, you know, and Mm then um, the more that we talked, the more I kind of got a little more comfortable with him. And I started to um, send like what I thought was was the version of a nude, which was like brawn underwear or like bikini pictures. And he literally told me he's like, that's not a nude. Yeah, that's not a nude. You need to show nipples. Uh huh. I'm not kidding. He literally says you need to show nipples. He's his personality is very like I think he try he says things as if he's joking, but he's serious. Yeah. You like know. he's trying to present it off as like, yeah, do this, but it's like actually really do it. Like yeah. he's trying to nudge, like, nudge, like Like you need to show nipples. Like you would think that that's like he's joking, uh-huh. but he no. So when you were in those moments, like with Snapchatting him and talking to him, like, were you super excited and like into it? And you're like, oh my gosh, like Diplo, he's like into me. Like, were you feeling good about it all? At the beginning? No. At the beginning, I kind of thought it was just like, it was like joking for Mm -hmm. me. I was like, this isn't really real. I was like, this is like, this isn't real, you know? And um, I was just kind of going along with it just out of curiosity and interest. Mm -hmm. As time progressed, yes, and I will say that I do believe that my friends. Oh, I don't want to. I don't want to put the blame on my friends because it's not their fault. But I do think like the hype surrounding me, like in my ear, like, oh my god, it's Diplo, and like the fact that like you haven't had sex with him yet, and he's still talking to you because we talked for a long yeah, time. Yeah, you didn't meet until you were twenty one, right? Yeah. So like between the years seventeen and twenty one, did you guys like FaceTime and do the, like talk a lot? So we would talk a lot and. So, okay, so we would talk a lot. We talked the most during, I feel like, COVID. Mm -hmm. But before that, from 2014 up until like 2017, 2018, it was like here and there. Mm -hmm. Um, He would, it would really be when like he was in town or if he wanted to like fly me out, he would constantly ask if he could fly me out to Vegas. (sighs) Um, He would come to town because he would be in Miami a lot. So Mm -hmm. he so we did talk quite often because at that time he was coming to Miami a lot. Was he seeing you then, though? No, because I was always making up excuses. I was so I was so nervous. And I was like also such a prude. Like I Mm -hmm. like I said, I grew up Christian and like my intention was honestly to wait till marriage. Yeah, that was my intention. And you knew that if you were to hang out with him, like he would want to do that. I knew that that's exactly what he wanted because it's what he said multiple times, you know, Yeah. like he, he made that very, very clear. And yeah. So what led to the point where you actually met in person? Like, so you had moved to L.A. already? No, the first time we met was in Miami at um, a club. I don't remember which club it was. I think it was like Story, Story Mm. Nightclub in Miami. And um, I mustered up the courage to finally, like, go Uh and and meet him. And and, um, because he would always ask me whenever he'd come that he would, like, guest this me for the show. Yeah. And I would make up an excuse. I would say, oh, I can't. I'm babysitting today. Or like, I don't know. I just always would make up an excuse. And that's something he would constantly like bring up to me too. And say like, you're always making excuses. Like you treat me like I'm a scrub. Like, (laughs) um, yeah. And to the point where like it did start to kind of make me feel bad. I felt bad like for him or like for wasting his time in a sense. Mm -hmm. And as we continue to talk more and more, I was just like listening to my friends who were saying, you know, um, 
he must actually like you because he, you know, he still talks to you and you haven't even fucked him yet. Yeah. You know, like a lot of these guys, they they drop you when you when you're not giving them what they want. So I was like, oh, OK, like, you know, I kind of feel bad. I don't want to waste his time. So 2018, I met him at Story Night Club and yeah. it was chill, like um you didn't like go home together it was just like no a, but no just like a, a in public like meeting yes but he did want me to go home with him and it's interesting because i remember telling my friends even before we went into the club i was like make sure that we leave before his set is over like we oh. need to leave before his set is over because i do not want to be stuck with going home with him yeah yeah and you did you left like before yes yes uh, yes and he messaged me afterwards and was like why'd you leave yeah like why'd you leave where are you at come come over come you know and i'm just like yeah. well he probably like hearing this too like you know he's successful and probably can get a lot of like women so it is interesting that you had been kind of like you know, entertaining him for so long without giving him like full satisfaction, which probably made him even more like prone to wanting to get to you. And essentially like that sounds like grooming too, because he like wanted you so bad, but then you weren't like fully reciprocating. So he would like use tactics and over time, like build this trust with you until the point where like he did get you in that position to, I guess, get what he wanted. So, yeah. And, and even like, I didn't even know what the word grooming meant until I started sharing like my, my story on Twitter, mm -hmm. um, I didn't even realize that like what was happening was grooming, like the whole like him teaching me exactly how he wants his news. Yeah. And like I kind of learned how to like speak to guys through him, which mm. is so bad because that's like toxic that it's not what I use now. But like at the time I was like, OK, like this is how it's supposed to be. This is what I need to say back to him. This is what he wants to hear. Mm -hmm. This is what he wants from me. You know, um, and then I learned like that is literally grooming. That's what grooming is. And I didn't know that. Yeah. So let's talk about like the second, third time. Like what what was the progression of you guys like hanging out in person? So you saw him in Miami that time. You, nothing really happened because you left early, which was smart. So did you see him in like in Miami and Florida a few different times before you ended up moving to L.A.? Um, no. So then you moved to L.A. and that was like. Once you moved to the West Coast. I also you... moved to LA in 2018 too. Okay, that so like that year. same year. Yeah. Just a couple months apart. And it's so funny because the day that I landed in LA, I posted on my Snapchat, like in LA, like, uh -huh. and um, he was like, how long are you here for? And I was like, I moved here. And he was like, <laughs> he responded to my story and I was like, I moved here. And he's like, what's your address? Oh, really? Did, and I literally left him on red. I yeah. was like, oh, hell no. Yeah, I left him on red. And then that was like a common thing that he would constantly say to me. And on my Instagram, actually, like I have highlights called truth. Uh -huh. I have truth highlights. And some of those screenshots are in there. And you'll see like he he even at one point, because I had ignored him so much about the address thing, he, I had posted a picture of Christina Milian and her husband. Uh -huh. And he swiped up and he responded saying, that's us if you send me your address. Weird. So you really want to know your address. He really wanted to know my address. And so at some point, I'm assuming he like got it right. Like, I mean, you guys did start hanging out more casually when you moved here. Yeah, right? he did get he did get my address eventually. <laughs> um, he, he never you came over. Or? No, no, he didn't ask me on. Well, no, he didn't ask me on dates, but he would ask me to come to like casual settings constantly. Like he would like there was a time I remember where I think Courtney Kardashian was having an event. Mm -hmm. And I remember like Lucas Sabat was there and and it seemed like it was kind of like a something that I don't think I would even really like be invited to. But yeah. he invited me to that. And I didn't go because I still had like a fear of having to end up going home with him. So when did that fear like, I guess, go away or at least lightened up enough to where you guys did start hanging out more intimately? Um, when my friends basically were like, girl, he's going to drop you like he's he's going to drop you. And clearly he he likes you like he's put up with you know, you giving these excuses all uh -huh. the time and even him like telling me like, you always play me. Um, you never actually want to see me and, and things like that. Um, there was a time where he, he DM'd me and said, um, 
I asked him why he was being mean. Mm-hmm. And he's like, I'm not trying to be mean. I'm just sad that you never want to link with me. And the reason that he he said, uh, the reason why I asked him why he was being mean is because he got upset that I asked him if it's true that he has herpes. Yeah. Okay. So, so the, like at this point, you guys hadn't had sex before the herpes, no. right? So you were, and also just question, like, did you just never like him? Like, what about him? Like, why didn't you like him? Or did you ever have a crush on him? Like, no, I never had a crush on him in the beginning. So it it grew. The okay, more that he on. showed interest in me and the more that I had people talking in my ear about like how like, wow, he must be into you. Like you haven't given him what he wanted and he still talks to you. He still reaches out to you. He he cares. And it's like, no, he doesn't. He doesn't care. And I was yeah. always kind of just like like playful with him, mm-hmm. you know, because I, I didn't take it serious at all. Like, I really didn't. So at the point when it became more like that I was more interested was like as time progressed, as he showed more interest, as he started saying things like love bombing me, Uh as he started complimenting me all the time. I guess like when did you like, I guess uh, when you asked him about the herpes, like first off, how did you hear about the herpes? Like were you into him and you want to like actually check or were you trying to like you know, troll him by like asking about that. Like, no, I was actually like at that point. So that was already when I was living in LA and I was, and I was into him. I was constantly like trying to muster up the courage to finally have sex with him. Yeah, I was. And, um, you know, I was, I was dealing with like contemplating, putting my morals aside and thinking that like, I, I, I don't want to waste his time and I do and I do like him now because of all these years and he stayed in constant communication with me. And like I felt. I felt special, yeah, you know, yeah. I felt like I was like, OK, you know what, like maybe like maybe he does like deserve this. Yeah. Like he's so like stupid. He's worked hard enough for it. Yeah. So might as well just give it to him. Yeah. And um, so one of my friends had DM'd him mm-hmm. friend. DM'd him um, and when she was going to Bali because he was in Bali and um, he sent me a screenshot and he was like, isn't this your friend or isn't this your girl? She's, you know, she's DMing me uh-huh. and she's DMed me before too. And he was like, uh, see, like, see how your friends want me to like, that'd be funny if I fucked her and I and, and you won't even let me fuck you. Oh, wow. So I was like why do you have to be so mean? I was like, you could do whatever you want, do whatever you want, but I don't know why you have to be so mean or why you're being mean. And he was like, I'm not trying to be mean. I'm just sad. You never linked me. And then you asked kind about of the flipping. herpes. Yeah. And then I asked about the herpes and I was, Oh no. And I said, well, she's the one actually who told me that you have herpes. So is that true? Ooh. And how was his response? He literally went off on me. He went off on me. He's like, I don't have time for the shit that you and your friends talk. Like, Uh um, I don't have fucking herpes. I get tested as much as a porn star. Like, I'm clean. Like, if anything, maybe you're the one who has stuff. And he would constantly say that. Meanwhile, I'm a freaking virgin. Yeah, projecting. You know, and like, um, yeah, so he blocked me. And then he blocked her. Oh, really? (laughs) Yeah, and then that's what happened. And it was a constant, even like before that, even before I had moved to LA, we had like little tiffs here and there where like I would get upset with something that he would say that was like disrespectful and I would block him mm-hmm. and then I would unblock him and re-add him or then he would block me and then re-add me it was like a constant thing like that so it was kind of like a game too and it was mm-hmm. kind of like that talk to- that toxicity of like being kind of like wanting to like win that person back mm-hmm. I don't know I don't know how to explain it so when it he just- blocked you over the herpes did you think that like did you think it was just like part of this game or did you think like, oh, it's over now? He's so mad. Like, we're never talking again. I thought it was like over. We're never talking again. Really? I was like, he's so fucking mad. Were you like super upset over that? I felt bad. Yeah. I felt bad because I was like, dang, like, I just l- like, what if that's not even true? And I kind of just said it out of like spite because of him being like. With your what friend, that's kind of like a like, fucked up thing with your friend. So I yeah, totally get- and, and it is true. She did. She is one of the ones who told me. She's like, you know, I heard yeah. he has herpes. So that's why, yeah. And that's the thing, like how he was able to like kind of get into my head and just make me feel bad for things, you know, that I had a valid reason of asking him because I've asked him, bef- I've asked him again even after that about other 
STDs, and mm-hmm. he would just get so upset that it got to the point where I couldn't. Yeah, you couldn't, I couldn't even bring speak it up. I couldn't bring it up to him. I couldn't bring up STDs to him because I realized how much of a sensitive topic that is. Uh huh. So after the herpes fight, how long did it take for you guys to reconnect again? Like a month or two. Okay, and then that was like the longest time that we um hadn't spoken for a while. Really? Yeah. So then, what was your um like? How long after that point until like you guys started to actually get intimate? When was that? That was that happened in December. What was it like? It was around the end of the year in 2018. Like, was it shortly after? Like a year after it, that? Or no, like, it wasn't. It was like so in two. Th- I think that happened at the end of 2018, and then I lost my virginity to him in April of 2019. So okay. just a couple months. And so kind of shortly after we like reconnected, kind of, and I think that kind of is like what put the pressure on me too, where I was like. You know. Yeah, now it's time. <laughs> yeah. So let's talk about that time. So when did you, like, did you guys, did you go to his house or how did it all, like, set up? So what happened is it was around Coachella. Or was it Coachella? Well, or April stage is Coachella coach. time. Yeah. So it was, so we had got, okay, so it was around that time and he wanted me to meet him in Coachella, mm-hmm. like, you know, um, at his place in Coachella. And I curved him then, too. Were you at Coachella that year? Yeah. So it could have happened. Yeah. 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 So I curved him then, too. And then I had gone back for Stagecoach um, for a Neon Carnival, because Neon Carnival, uh-huh. Stagecoach, whatever. I didn't actually go to the Stagecoach performance, but or festival. But, but the Neon Carnival Neon is Carnival. where he would be, right? No, he didn't like do watching? Neon Carnival, oh, okay. actually. I just went just with my friends uh-huh. to go, which is actually funny because he was, like, making fun of me. That's another thing. He put he would put me down a lot, Yeah. but then he would lift me up, too. So it was, like, a constant, like, up and down mm-hmm. with that. And it was, like, a constant, like, yearning for, like, him to, like, put me up when he would put me down. I don't know how to explain it, but... um. He made fun of me for going to Neon Carnival. He's like, that's whack. Like, no one goes to Neon Carnival. He sounds like a petty LA person that's just trying to make you feel like, oh, you do that? Like, bro, you're such a loser. Like, so it's like petty things. Yeah, he's like, they can't even afford me performing at (laughs) Neon Carnival. Like, blah, blah, blah. So um, I was supposed, he wanted me to meet him there. Didn't didn't go. Mm -hmm. But um, I told him, I'll meet you when we're back in LA. Like, yeah. when we're back in L.A., like, I'll make it up to you. I'll finally, like, make it up to you. And then that's how that happened. So it was, like, in April, middle of April. Did you, like, drive there? Did you, like, call an Uber or something? No, I uh, called an Uber. And he, did he, like, live in the hills? Or do you have, like, a condo or something? He or? lived in the hills. He actually had a really nice view. Not yeah. going to lie. Like, I, yeah, he had, like, a really nice, like, floor-to-ceiling windows in his bedroom. Like, very pretty skyline. Mm-hmm. Like, very, very nice. Yeah. Would you say your first, like, sex, like, you losing your virginity, was it, like, romantic? <laughs> was it good? <laughs> I mean, I we, we'll talk about all the evil things he's done since, but, like, at least the first um, time, was it okay? Uh, I was drunk. Mm. I was drunk. I was drunk on... Well, that helps a little bit, right? Yeah, now. I was, I was, I had to, like, I was just, like, I had a lot of wine. Yeah. So you guys hung and, out for a bit before, and then it led to that. Yeah, and then a little bit after, too. But um, I wouldn't say it was good. It was just, you know. Yeah. Well, you seem like you're really, like, I mean, it, at this point, it's, like, years of, like, anticipation to this point. So it's probably, like, a really nerve-wracking moment. Mm-hmm. So afterwards, like, was it, did you feel like your relationship with him had changed? Not instantly, no. You didn't, like, fall in love with him right after? Uh, I wouldn't say that. No, I don't think I fell in love with... I don't think I was ever really, like, in love with him. I think, like, maybe the um, infatuation grew a little bit stronger at that point, you know? And even just, like, that night, like, you mentioned, like, if it was romantic, um, he's just very charming. Mm -hmm. He's very, very charming and, like, tries to seem or appear, like you know, relatable and down to earth. So even when I was like at his house, he was like saying like, do you want me to teach you how to play chess? Like he was like, I have chess. Like he was, he had a chess thing there and, and was just kind of like, you know, being like that. Um, 
he even that night he was like you better not flake on me like you better not you know so that's what i'm saying where it's like the putting down and then lifting up like yeah um you know constantly telling me that i play him too much um yeah did he know you were a virgin no no he he, he knew that night though because i literally bled on his bed okay that's a real thing i thought that was like not a real thing popping a cherry (laughs) i thought you like when you put the tampon in it does it for you anyways right no (laughs) that's not true no i I oh my gosh did he find out during the sex and then how was his reaction he was just like you're bleeding and i was like i'm a virgin i know yeah i was like i'm a virgin and he was like okay and literally didn't care and then he Ugh. like he's like all right whatever he went and he's like got a towel he's like we're adults here like got a towel whatever and then um even after that he wanted to so he was gonna call me an uber when we're, when everything was done and we mm-hmm. were like chilling whatever like laying in his bed and i literally i was like ready to call my uber like i was like ready to get. To i was ready to get out of there i had yeah. i like had my phone and i was like looking to call my uber and he saw that and he was like do you want me to call your uber and i'm like no it's fine like that's another thing with him i never wanted like i never acted like a obsessed crazy fan i never wanted, wanted anything money. from him i never yeah. wanted money he was always offering to fly me out i was always like no 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 you mm-hmm. know and like um even with what's it called with um him wanting to get my uber i was like no i got it and he's like trust me you're gonna want me to call your your uber and i'm like why and he's like because look and shows it to me (laughs) and his ubers are free oh i don't know if that's like a celebrity thing but like all his ubers are free and i'm like what the hell like how do you people yeah he doesn't need it like zero 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 like when he yeah so he i guess he must have like a connect with uber like they I don't know. Yeah. These celebrities, they get a lot of wow. shit for free. Yeah, they do. And they make so much too. It's like, and they make so it. much they could afford it. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. Um, oh, sorry. Yeah, no, add on to it. What were you yeah. Say? What I was going to say is when he was going to call my Uber, mm-hmm. he starts, he started calling the Uber and then he like tried to start having sex again. And I was like, I was like, no, I'm bleeding. Remember, like, because I didn't want to. Again, does it just I was not stop? over it. I feel like once you pop, like, does well, like a certain amount come out and you're done, or is it like you're- <laughs> at that point? I don't know. I was, yeah. just, I, I said it because I was like, I didn't want to do it again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and I was like, no, I'm bleeding. Remember, and like he was like, he's like, that's fine. We have a towel. Like that's oh, fine. We have a towel. And I'm like, yeah, but you already called the Uber. He's like, that's fine. Meanwhile, like I'm kind of like sobering up now. I'm not gonna lie. The second time hurt. Oh, so you did do it a second time. We did do it a second time. The Uh, first time, I feel like because I had like the wine, you know, it like didn't hurt as bad. Um, The second time hurt so bad. And and, um, yeah, we did do it a second time. Did your Uber wait? (laughs) No, no. The Uber freaking left. And he ended up having to call me another one afterwards. But yeah, and Mm. actually at the end of that, so like whatever with the towel and stuff, at the end of that, he... I remember him walking to the corner of his room and looking back at me while I'm like putting back on my clothes. And he was like, how old are you, by the way? <laughs> he never knew. Did and he I'm ever like, no, your age, I guess. Not really. Not really. No, I don't think so. But here's the thing. When I was 17, I looked like I was 15. Yeah. If you go back and look like now I look my age and like my Instagram and stuff looks my age. But when I was 17, I looked like I was 14, 15 years old. I did not look like yeah legal at all like even when i first moved to la people were like you are not 21 Mm -hmm. like how old are you now i'm about to i turned 27 in like a couple days getting old yeah no i'm old too i get it and and even now like being 27 and looking back i'm just like i can't even imagine being being 27 right now and having any interactions with a 17 year old i can't even imagine even with a 19 year old with a like it's just Oh, I totally get it. There's gays out here who like to fuck like 18, 19, 20 year olds. And I'm like, I'm that's so unattractive to me. Like yeah. I like guys that are like 10 years older than me. And I like I feel bad for my younger self now. Like looking yeah. like being like 27 now, like I'm like, why? Like how did I like how did I end up in that situation? Well, it's also weird too that like as someone like with his celebrity stature, that like like after all of that then he's like oh how old are you like why would he have not like i mean obviously the thought obviously crossed his mind oh oh no guess what he said after that 
What? So after so after that, it's interesting because like in my mind, I was like, what if I just freaking told him like I'm 15 right now? He, yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I obviously told him my real age. I think at the time I was 22. And I said, I'm 22. Why? And he was like, I, c- I could always tell you were young. I could always mm-hmm. tell you were really young. And I'm like, how? And he was like, well, you never wanted to come. Mm-hmm. And when you did finally, when you when you were kind of thinking about coming, you would always say like, um, I don't want to come alone. Mm -hmm. I don't want to come alone. And I'm like, what does that have to do with you knowing that I'm young? And he's like, well, girls who are older, they're only trying to bring their friends if the friends are going to fuck me too. Oh, wow. And he was like, you (laughs) wanted like support. Yeah. And I was like speechless. I was like, I was so speechless. So he knows exactly what he's doing. He knows exactly what he's doing. I literally like thought about it afterwards so much. Yeah. Um. When he recorded me that night. That's what I was about to ask. So wait, that night he recorded you? Oh my gosh. So there are reports online that that report that Shelly was recorded against her will by Diplo. How did you find out about that? And how did that even like happen? So... Something he used to do a lot in the beginning um, <clears throat> was not in, not in the beginning when he was when he was upset that I wasn't obliging to his request of coming to have sex with him. Mm-hmm. He started sending me videos of him having sex with other women over Snapchat. Yes. Like would he do it like with the phone or like send it as like a message? As a message. Weird. So he'd like record them and then like send Snapchat them. Snapchat and text actually. And th- so. He did this before you guys had sex, right? Before I, we had sex. And like, what? Were, how did you feel about seeing him like fucking other women? Like, was it gross? To it you? was odd. Yeah, it was very odd. It like was very off, gross. Right? It was. It was a turn off. Yeah, but he would. He would approach it like, look at look at this. Like, look at the girls that I get. You see, and like you're playing uh-huh. me like I'm a scrub. Like, look at uh-huh. all the girls that I get. You could get it like this next time if you stop playing games. Like things Ew. like that. Yeah. Trying to kind of just show me and be like, look, look at all these girls who are doing this for me, and you won't. I like, feel like women don't operate that way. Like that's such a like turn off to like what girl is going to turn on like by seeing you like fuck a bunch of other bitches. Like I know. Well, more recently I've heard that girls actually do, <laughs> oh, yeah. which is interesting. Like girl, like, I don't know. I've heard that girls actually do kind of like see what they're going to get into, I guess. Before. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> so then how did you find out that he was recording you? Okay. So the night that I lost my virginity, the first round which uh-huh. is so weird to say yeah. um he didn't it was like you know whatever went by quick and everything yeah. um the second round i heard him say fuck it i'm recording this and the reason why he said fuck it i'm recording this is because when he used to send me videos of other girls in the beginning mm-hmm my react, my response to him was, I really hope that whenever we do have sex, you don't record me. Yeah. Especially because it was going to be my first time. Mm-hmm. And I was like, you know, I really just hope you don't record me. He's like, yeah, I'm not, I wouldn't. I won't. Okay. I won't record you. You know? So I trusted that. Yeah. And the first round he didn't. Mm-hmm. The second round he said, fuck it. I'm recording this. And does he bring his like, Phone out, put it on flash, like all that. And then But you, you know, you to could get into no? the to get into the so it's awkward to get into the details of it, but basically it was from behind. Uh huh. So yeah. I heard that, but I didn't really see it until, you know, I got home that day and I and I called my friend and I was like, I'm just really worried because I could have sworn I heard him say, Fuck it, I'm recording this. And she was like, oh, my God, do you think he actually recorded it? And I'm like, well, I hope not, but I'm going to ask him. Mm-hmm. And I asked him the next day and he was like, I don't remember recording you. Did I record you? I don't remember. And then he, I was like, well, I hope not. Like, good. I hope not. And he um, like 30 minutes later, he he sends me a text and he's like, found a vid. Oh, God. Yeah. And how like was it? Do you remember? Was it a long video? Um. Like 30 seconds or something? I, it, it's not like a long, it's not the whole entire time, but yeah. but he did tell me that he had to crop some parts because he needed to like crop like his, like 
you know, tattoos and stuff, even though some of his tattoos showed, yeah. there was also one where he said like his, his face was showing and he needed to make sure that his face wasn't showing. So he had to crop that too. Weird. Yeah. So he sent, he probably has a long one. I have no idea. He just sent me a snippet of it, you know, like, like exactly almost? what he wanted. Yeah. You know, exactly. I don't even know. I don't understand how his brain works truly. When you got that message, did your stomach like sink? Yes. Yeah. And yeah. then what was your immediate reaction to him? Were you like, delete this shit? I didn't say delete it because I knew he wouldn't. Yeah. He ha- he does what he wants. Mm-hmm. That's kind of like the consensus when it comes to him. It's just like I do whatever the fuck I want. And um, I like I sent back like the skull emoji, like the dead emoji. Yeah. And I was just like, oh, God, no. Probably feeling like a bit defeated there, too, yeah. right? Because you know that you can't, like, make him erase it. You don't trust him to do that. So it's yeah. just kind of like, fuck it. I guess, like, he won this one. Yeah. yeah. So we don't have to go into detail about the threesome, but you there are reports that claim that you, he pressured you into having threesomes. Um, was it, like, multiple times or was it, like, one instance? So... Thank you for watching part one of my interview with Diplo's victim, Shelly August. Tune in next week for part two of her story. Let's get into it.